on 94.3 WSC. Is Ron Paul on the line, by the way, guys? He sure is. All right. Thank goodness. Now, Ron, I just want to explain to you what's going on here in Radio Row. I know you were at the uh, Southern Republican Leadership Conference here in Charleston. Thanks for joining us this morning, by the way. Thank you. Now, uh, Rick Santorum just sat down. This just got a little awkward. So uh, he's he totally moved over, and he's going to come back. He moved out of the way of the doctor. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want, I'm sorry that you're not here on Radio Row with us because I made you – a recipe out of the Ron Paul family cookbook. I made you some impossible pie. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Why didn't somebody tempt me? <laughs> oh. Well, and, you know, I'm being a little facetious with this, Doc, because, I mean, what do you think about the media overlooking you? Last night's debate was so obvious. Here we are talking about the abortion debate, and they don't go to the baby doctor? <laughs> It is pretty amazing, you know, and there was another time they were talking about medicine. They spent about 10 or 15 minutes on it, and I finally got his attention. But uh, on the abortion issue, it was the crowd that finally made him change his mind. He's all oh, this going to something else, something else. He's, and then the crowd started yelling, and he says, do you really want to talk about this? I said, yeah, I want to talk about it. You know, you, I am a doctor, <laughs> you know. We have, uh, we have uh, Dr. Ron Paul live here on 94.3 WSC in our special broadcast on Radio Row. Uh, questions from our listeners this morning. Joshua wanted to know, if you close all the bases around the world, Ron, and you bring these guys home, where are they going to go? He's afraid they're going to be uh, they're going to be cast out. They'll be unemployed. <laughs> well, no, we don't take we don't uh, dismiss them from the military. What we do is we bring them home and we station them here. You know, in the 90s, we closed down a lot of bases in the United States, which I thought was foolish. I mean, we're supposed to defend this country. We're not supposed to build bases in Saudi Arabia and provoke so much hatred toward us. And that was part of our problem. We're in too many places. The Japanese are tired of us over there. And and we subsidize uh, Germany's uh, defense, and we subsidize their economy and their welfare state. I'd bring them home and have them spend their money here at home. I mean, it would be an immediate economic benefit to have our military here still have a – actually, I think we'll have a stronger national defense, and it would help us economically as well. All right. Speaking of uh, uh, of uh, the military, it's breaking news, uh, Dr. Paul, this morning that six U.S. Marines – have been killed in a helicopter crash in Afghanistan. Your thoughts this morning? Well, I, I mean, that to me is so hard to handle because it's so tragic. And if I'd have had my way, we wouldn't be fighting that war. So whether it's whether it's the six or the 6,000 that we lost, it just breaks my heart because I, I see this as a preventable problem. If we'd have only gone to war under the proper procedure, and that is declare war and know what we're doing, win them and get them over with, I mean, if, if we can win World War II in less than four years, I would think that if we did it properly and needed to be there, it wouldn't have taken us 10 years to have a stalemate over in Afghanistan. So to me, it's just a sad tragedy, uh, but it should make us reassess our values and our foreign policy so that we might be able to prevent any more deaths. Dr. Ron Paul joining us live here on 94.3 WSC. We're occupying Paul Street right now, Ron. No, oh, good. You're getting your day in the sun because, boy, does the media love to snub you. What's that all about? <laughs> good, good question. Um, yeah, I guess we should ask John Stewart. He has a pretty strong <laughs> opinion about it. <laughs> but and he certainly came to my defense. Well, you know, I don't know. It, it, I think it's hard to attack me because most of the other people have to defend their flip-flops, and they can't find those flip-flops. Uh, and I, I think they have a hard time refuting this message of the Constitution. You know, attack me means that, oh, Ron cares too much about the Constitution. He over-concentrates on it. That's a hard argument to sell. So I think the establishment, which I include, you know, a lot of the media as well as the leadership of both parties, they, they really wish I would just go away and not say these things because it's embarrassing to them. All right, Dr. Ron Paul joining us live here on 94.3 WSC. I want to know what you think about Newt Gingrich saying a vote for Ron or Rick is a vote for Barack Obama. I don't, I don't understand that. You know, if they vote, if they vote for, if they vote for me, they're voting for me. Matter of fact, he has a hard time, you know, making the case because if if you put my name up against Barack Obama, I do as well as Romney does right now, and it's an even race. 
because the freedom message is very appealing to independence. It has civil liberties involved. It has a foreign policy which is different, and the progressives who put Obama in office are very, very frustrated. So I get a lot of support from Democrats and independents, and the votes both in Iowa and New Hampshire uh, shows this. So uh, I think that's wishful thinking on their part to think that I wouldn't do well against Obama. Well, your final thoughts, South Carolina listeners, uh, are it the ears are on you right now, Ron. Your final thoughts before we head into the primary tomorrow. Well, the main thing is if they want to change in the course, they got to vote for somebody who's not part of the status quo, and I certainly am challenging the foreign policy, the monetary policy. I'm the only one that's talking about real spending and, and shrinking the size of government. So if they care about the status quo, they don't have much work to do. I mean, uh, if, if I don't win the primary, another Republican will win that's part of the status quo. If we don't do anything, we're going to have more Obama so if, if they want a significant shift back to constitutional government and emphasis on personal liberty, I don't think they have many choices other than to uh, vote for me. Well, Ron, if it doesn't go your way tomorrow, will you jump on a team, one of these guys' teams and, and be a part of the Department of Treasury or something fiscal because we need you, man? No, I wouldn't be quite ready to do that. I, I, see, I see the races. And certainly the, the nominee won't be picked tomorrow. Um, and I see this more as a marathon rather than a sprint. Uh, you know, uh, they were hoping that in, in three three primaries it would be all over, but uh, there, there's a lot to go, and there's a lot of caucus states, and I think to make the point of limited government, the more delegates I can get, the better. Dr. Ron Paul, live Radio Row, our team coverage of Election 2012. It's 94.3 WSC. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.